Looks like we have another contract here, of course. The name registry. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I think name registry is one of my favorite kind of design patterns. Why is that? Well, it's like before you had to like create your own coin to create a name registry, like name coin or something like that. Yeah. And now yeah. you can just do it with one contract. And potentially, even in the context of that contract, you can custom design your own incentive structure, like what it takes as collateral to actually register a name. Ah, yeah, so you can experiment with different different kind of ways of, yeah. of incentivizing registration, exactly. expiration, bidding, bidding on names. Exactly, uh, you can yeah. have market dynamics included, you can have dual ledgers, you can have limits on the number of things that people yeah. can register. Yeah, so yeah, that's typically the problem that you have in this in this case. So you have a kind of, you have an application, but you want to show something to, to real humans, Yeah. and they have a hard time dealing with these... 32 byte hexadecimal strings that's that's well hard to remember which person is, uh, is what what application belongs to it so you want to be able to to link a uh, un readable name to an ethereum address or to an ethereum account or to accounts you know, of a contract. Or, or you know different chains you know linking them like to ipfs data or something like that right it's yeah like, you're right so you can it doesn't have to be a, a human name per se yeah you could even do this with with URL shortening uh -huh. for IPFS content. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a glorified hash table. And as you're saying, there are all kinds of different yeah. kind of implementations possible. So maybe, maybe there's something that uh, that can be updated, or no, that's will true. Be yeah, just, exactly. Uh, write yeah. once and be stored forever. Yeah, uh, have something that that expires over time. So yeah, maybe we should just walk through what we have here, though. So what what is the problem that we're getting at with the name registry? I I just said that, didn't I? You need the human readable form. Right? Yes, okay. human readable form for user interface, or but uh, also as a developer, it can be useful. So if you want to refer to another contract, but you the contract is not it doesn't exist yet, or you don't know where it is located, you can reference it by oh, right. So you can have named contracts. Exactly. So that's just canonical versions of a contract. Yeah. So you create like a system, a system of contracts. You're like a cluster, and they can refer to each other. And you mm -hmm. can even use that for updating a version of a. Of a contract and always pointing to the latest, yeah. to the latest version. Um, and we could actually use that for the design patterns themselves. Ah, uh, we can create a design pattern name registry and yeah. it points to the. And then all you need to do is put the name of the contract in the other contract, and it would pull the latest version of the. Right. So how, how would people know the location of the name registry for these patterns, though? Well, if we're making it, then I guess we would just yeah. know where it is. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and but how other people all... could pay us. Yeah, do. okay, they they pay us to to know this. <laughs> exactly right. Back yeah. to the real world. Uh, so what's the context here? So right. So yeah, we mentioned oh. there, there can be all kinds of different implementations. You can update the reference. Maybe you actually using a name and, and point it to something that yeah. doesn't exist yet and you can even create nested structures like the, the subdomain in the, the yeah. DNS name registry. Yeah, uh, exactly. And so there's a lot of different kind of contexts I think that we've explored. Yeah. What are the kind of general problems or forces that kind of trade-offs involved? Well, a lot of them, you can actually look at the, the, the regular name registration. You have these, these name squatters that are reserving these names and then just yeah. holding on to them. Or or they register like Joel, but then with a zero instead of an O. Yeah. So they they try to cheat you in, in, mm -hmm. in or, or even using like special Unicode characters. So that, that's also that's also going to be a problem in this uh, in this case. Well, to a certain degree, that's also a plus because you have incentives for people to kind of register um, to actually get there first, yeah. which can drive adoption and, of it. So. And this can be quite a strong revenue model yeah. for creating decentralized applications, right? So if you are the first person that creates application and you allow people to register their name in the yeah. context of your application, yeah. maybe just for the for the leaderboard or for some kind of yeah. internal transaction system, yeah. just selling like all the, 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 the pre-registered names could be a way to get, a, yeah. get an income. Um, but you, you need to do, you need to think about what, what needs to happen in regards to expiration and yeah. people losing their, their keys? Yeah. And is, is, the, is the Google Google name going to be yeah. reserved forever or is it going to be released at some uh, at some point? So, looks like we have a little problem. It's, it, it's a lot of variation on this. Looks like we could write a whole book just about this one. Yeah, it's this one totally, contract. Totally boring kind of. book, though. All right. Yeah. All right. Scratch that idea. So, what's the solution here? 
Solution is a global registry containing name address associations. So, and uh, yeah, you could just like I said, there's a lot of different variety on the rules that you could implement in them, including the market dynamics, exchange, locking, expiration dates, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, and also allowing for first lookups. So giving giving an address which name is registered to it, mm -hmm. contrary to giving a name what yeah. address yeah. is uh, yeah. is linked to that. Mm -hmm. And and a very good example. Oh, we have an example. It's called, it's the name reg oh, yeah. itself. So this is the reference implementation mm -hmm. for the for a global name registry, and most of the Ethereum clients actually have support for this uh, for this API. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's it's currently hard coded yet, and it's maybe it's not even configured in the clients. But you can configure it, and once it's set, you can use it to do all kinds of name lookups. Uh, actually, in the clients yourself. Yeah, within the within yeah. the Ethereum clients. Yeah. So ex expect when missed gets out so the the dep browser yeah this will become much more important because then you can register the name of your dep and then you can just type in the name and then yeah. look up the, the relevant contract uh, there mm -hmm. and it's pretty pretty trivial typically there's a way to register a name and there's a way to get to get the address giving a name or get the get the name giving a certain address yeah so very straightforward api but uh, very very useful uh, i have to say i'm i'm yeah, it looks looks pretty good. Does does this one that uh, is implemented have a sort of bidding feature on there? Or? I don't. I think the simple implementation doesn't have it yet. Yeah. But uh, you can think of uh, you can think of ones where you can bid for. You can outbid other ones. You can take over. Okay. Make it as complex as you uh, as you want. Right. Which which name are you going to register first? I think Ethercasts. Ethercasts. I have to beat you to it. So. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you.